Warhammer 40,000 10th edition, a new edition of 40K, a new chance for many, many opportunities. And right away, the first thing that I have to say, Space Marines versus Tyranids, absolutely epic. So if Games Workshop fails on everything else in delivering this new edition, and um, it's a balance of I'm hopeful and also a little bit of skepticism, being a longtime 40K player, but if they do nothing else, launching a new edition with these two factions is really setting an epic, epic narrative. For the first time in a long time, when was the last time it was Tyranids versus Imperium? Fourth edition? But for the first time, it's not chaos. And, and I love chaos, right? I'm a chaos player myself, but chaos versus Imperium, chaos versus Imperium, that story has been sold and recycled so many times. To bring in Tyranids and set the stage for that, because think about that framework. Think about that narrative. Imperium versus Tyranids. That's going to be a final showdown as they make their way towards the Golden Throne. First question. We've got Primaris. We've got Primarchs. Is the Emperor in some form going to return for this, this final battle? Second to this. So if you're an Imperium player, that's awesome. If you're a Tyranid player, that's awesome. If you play the other factions... This is a narrative opportunity because now with the major power player in the universe, the Imperium of Man, being occupied with Tyranids, this is a chance for other opportunities and a way to kind of navigate and take advantage of the chaos without being chaos. And of course, chaos being chaos, there'll be elements to play that. So from that narrative perspective, that is absolutely fantastic. Now, if we jump into the nuts and bolts... Of course, we're hearing the same things that we always hear. We've listened to the players, really. Um, it's going to be a streamlined edition of 40K, really. Every unit is going to have a battlefield role, really. We're going to release everything on day one. That, I believe. I mean, Games Workshop, if they've learned anything on launch day or, or close to it, making sure that the various factions and the various units are supported, that's... Um, that's important. That's important. So I'm, I'm not afraid if you're playing a certain type of army, you're going to be left out. Now, let's just kind of jump through those bullet points and ask a couple of questions. The first thing, when I've been watching the trailer videos, where this is going to be a streamlined, quick play edition of 40K, and that doesn't necessarily mean simplified. It means there is a lot of book, bookkeeping, there is a lot of accounting, there's a lot of stuff to remember for 40K, where I feel personally, if we compare it to other editions, yes, I want some evolution, but I feel like Games Workshop, they're not going to balance anything. So we have these various factions, we have these units, and I, I sympathize with that. This is one of the things that makes 40K so great compared to other wargaming systems is think about like this, this decision tree. You've got the various factions of 40K. It's called them the various armies. Then on top of that, you have dozens and dozens of units per faction. Trying to balance that, trying to make every unit relative, I don't want to say it's an impossible task, but it's a big task. So the way Games Workshop got around doing that over the past couple editions is just keep on introducing new rules for each unit. So this way you... you make them special, not in terms of balance, but in special in terms of what they can do. And that just leads to a lot of bloat, a lot of things to remember, and it drags down the game, right? I've talked about this in some of my other vlogs, what we're trying to do with this wargaming thing, building, painting, collecting, having some awesome terrain, taking uh, time away to play this game, you and I, we're trying to create that narrative. If I'm standing on that hill fighting off Tyranids, I'm physically there. Um, if I'm commanding my armies, I'm present on the tabletop, on that, that miniature battlefield. So immersion is key. Anything that pulls me away from the immersion, from that epic moment, that, that's, that's a game killer, right? Um, imagine if I have a group of Terminators and I'm holding the center and, and Tyranids are just flooding in, right? And it's a question of, we're not going to survive this. We never were. We went to battle knowing that. 
But all that matters is that a few stood against many. And I have that narrative, and I say to myself, can I survive three or four turns in the center of this table against the Tyranid horde and the Tyranids attack? And we go into the assault, and now, well, wait, what are the rules? Can I, can I use this power? Can this happen? What do the Tyranids do? You've got a mixed unit. How does that work? That pulls you out of the immersion. So the first thing when they say if it's streamlined, I would just take a flamer and, and just burn everything, chain sword everything, power sword everything, down to the bare, bare bones. Make this a quick playing game. Games Workshop, please don't do the usual where you reset everything and make it streamlined, make it a little simplified. Now you've just bought your, you've reset the clock, right? You've reset that clock where now you're going to add stuff on and add bloat, and then we'll be at the end of a new edition where it's essentially unplayable. Really make this streamlined. Make this quick play, especially as armies get larger and larger and larger. Quick play does not mean simplified. You want an example of a, of a quick playing war game? Go check out God Tier. The rules were built from the ground up. It's, it's got multiple elements of it, multiple elements of immersion, multiple units. It's a fantastic game. It is possible. You can keep the core 40K mechanics that, that we all know and streamline that. So that's the first thing I'm looking at. The perfect example that comes to mind, I'm going to pull from the, the board gaming arena, Descent First Edition. Descent First Edition back in the day was a dungeon crawler that was very complex and was an overlord system, right? You go against the party, the overlord controls the monsters, the trap, the dungeon. It was a fantastic game, but it was like Twilight Imperium. You played this game with your friends all day on a Saturday, and, and that was a lot of fun. It worked, but it required a lot of heavy lifting. When Fantasy Flight Games released Descent 2nd Edition, they, they kept the mechanics but streamlined it so much that an adventure, a mission, could play in about an hour, an hour and a half. That means more playability on the table. So I say that within the framework in that you can have an addition that's streamlined. It doesn't necessarily mean simple. So I'm, I'm hoping, I'm really hoping Games Workshop will, will deliver on that. Now, let's talk about other armies. Every edition... And I don't fault GW for this. Every edition Space Marines, they are, they are the win. They are the focus. They are the center, right? GW has done that, that meta. They've crunched the numbers. Right now, listening to this vlog, I'm willing to bet that you are currently playing Space Marines in some incarnation. Or if you're not a primary Space Marine player, you have a Space Marine army in some form. And second, if not... Within the next six months, you will be playing Space Marines because you are thinking about Space Marines. So this leads into the second part. We know Space Marines are going to get the flagship treatment. That's, that's okay. That's okay, right? That's okay. We know Tyranids are going to get the treatment, which that's awesome. That is really, really awesome. We're going to see a lot more Tyranids. We're going to see new units. We're going to see new kits. Um, we're going to see new starter sets. That's, this is a great time to be a Tyranid player. So we know Tyranids are going to get those upgrades and they're going to be favored. I want to make sure the other armies get that also, that they're playable. And I'm hoping, this is the second part on that checklist, I'm hoping that it won't just be a cut and paste. There'll be some updates. And if we're resetting through the rules, if we're resetting through the rules, then from there we can build up the other elements of the army. So I'm kind of 50-50. I'm, I'm hopeful. I mean, I think at this point, um, 40K is due for a reset. It goes through that cycle where every few years they have to reset. We get a new edition. Warhammer 40K X, this is a chance. This is really a chance to make 40K super playable. And I think, I'm hopeful that GW will do it. Because they have so many amazing models, so many amazing kits. And I'm not just talking about the current generation of models that you want to get them on the table. You want to get players to purchase more models, to purchase new stuff. You don't do that by one-off rules boosts or, or FOMO. That's not necessarily sustainable. I'm hoping this new edition will 
reset it. Of course, more to come. Of course, more to see. And then we're going to dip into um, a couple of other first glance things that I wonder about. Just just going off the rumors and kind of the sound bites that they're putting out there as it's official. It's official. Now as we begin to prepare for 10th. <laughs> 